Hello everyone. This is Mark Schauer. I'm the coordinator of the ELD initiative and I'd like to welcome you to the ELD MOOC. Thanks for joining us here. With this little presentation we would like to give you an introduction into the ELD initiative and the organization behind the MOOC. Um, we'll give you a quick overview over our aims, our pictures and our activities. Hope you'll enjoy the next 10-15 minutes with me and um, we'll start with the ELD mission statement which is to explain to you what is the aim of the initiative, where do we want to go from here and what do we want to reach with this initiative here. Um, our first aim would be to develop a holistic framework to consider the economic values of land in political decision-making processes. That is, we're not looking exclusively at political decision-making processes here, but we're also including the private sector in our work as well, since they are an important factor in land degradation and sustainable land management processes as well. We also estimate the economic benefits resulting from prevented degradation of land and the related ecosystem services there. To do this, we are developing a methodology and a toolbox to help us to create scientific robust data for decision makers. There is a lot of good material out there already. ELD is compiling this material and putting it together to build an economics case for the benefits derived from sustainable management practices of land. ELD is thus establishing itself as a knowledge management hub in the context of land management and economics of land degradation. In the end, ELD is probably meant to be an awareness raising tool as much as it is a scientific enterprise there or a scientific endeavor. We are sharpening awareness on the value of land and on related land-based ecosystem services. This is one of our aims as well. Therefore, this MOOC and your participation in this is very encouraging for us because we get a chance to reach out to a large number. So far it's more than a thousand who have signed up for this course here. A large number of interested experts and future experts and decision makers in the context of land management. Furthermore, besides the actual economics work and besides the awareness raising activities, we are proposing solutions. We are a solution oriented initiative talking to policy makers and to decision makers from the private sector as well in the context of the nexus of, of food, water and energy. And this is being done on a global scale worldwide. ELD is based on an initiative, uh, ELD is based on an inclusive partnership. This means that we are talking and working with scientists from different disciplines as well as with economists and experts from the field of business cooperating in the ELD network. ELD was founded by political organizations as well and these are strongly tied into the process here as well. We are engaging in cooperation with research institutions with non-governmental organizations as well as international businesses or umbrella organizations for the private sector and with a specific focus on farmers and agribusiness associations. We are involving, as I said, the partners from political decision-making processes in this as well on a local, on a regional and also on a global scale. Here you can see a number of logos of our partners and main contributors there. In the top row you see our political partners, funders as well. The ELD initiative was founded by UNCCD, the German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, the European Commission and IFPRI as well. 
the political partners you can find the logo on the lower uh, page of the slides as well um, contribute to the political discussion and to the awareness raising while you and you in way you'll see the middle row right side United Nations Universities um, Faculty for Water Environment and Health is our scientific coordination body they are responsible for pulling together all the single threats for this of the scientific processes which ELD has initiated you see a number of research organizations given here as well we're working very close with these ones and there are more there as well this is just a small selection GSZ is given here because GSZ is the host for the ELC, ELD secretariat which I am coordinating it. This little graph here should give you an overview about the ELD governance, the structure of our governance. You can see that there are two distinct pillars here. On the left hand side you see there's the policy partnership. This includes the ELD supporting partners, the ones I just mentioned, meaning the German Ministry for Development, UNCCD, the European Commission and notably also the Korea Forest Service as an important partner for us. They are supported by different development banks, private sector organizations, civil society. All these partners work within this pillar here. On the right hand side of the organigram you can see our science partnership. On the top of it you see that there's the scientific coordination which is being co which is being done or which is being uh, given by United Nations University in Toronto UNU INVE they are coordinating work of three different working groups the working group on economic valuation of options the working group of options and pathways for action targeting decision makers specifically and the working group on data and methodology which provides the economic robust backbone for the overall study and you see that there a little bit in the back in green there is a small circle which states case studies because ELD is managing its own case studies and its own independent scientific work and therefore the case studies are being co-managed through the working group leaders and contributors from all three working groups which I've just mentioned there. All this is being held together by the steering group in the center on top which is being which is being put together by um, policy as well as science partners and being again coordinated through the ELD secretariat. We try to pull in pull the strings on both of the policy and the science partners sides and thus trying to bring together a real science policy interface within the ELD initiative. The overall process is being supported by the ELD advisory group a group of senior experts from the field of policy from science and from and from economics senior experts in their field which help us to create awareness for our issue and also to spread the world word on ELD methods methodology data and messages You see also that there is this little book given down there, this um, symbol for a book. This is representing the reports which we are creating there. Throughout next year we'll come up with distinct reports for separate target audiences to facilitate the communication of ELD messages to decision makers. Besides these reports, we have other outputs as well coming from the ELD initiative. We are coming up with risk assessment strategies and ELD is creating 
on the long term a proactive view on environmental change processes. The ELD initiative and its network provide specific policy advice and the communication strategy and communication support to our partners as well. We think it's a very important aspect that we talk directly to the partners and adjust our messages and our outcomes to the needs of the specific decision makers and recipients on the other end of the communication line as well. ELD has initiated a basic scientific process already. We are engaging in our own independent research work but also building on existing work by partner institutions. There's a lot of good work out there and it would be a shame <laughs> not to use it. Therefore, um, we have for the first interim report which ELB, ELD has presented already made use of this work and we've put a selection of very good case studies on our website as well. Please have a look there. Our own work is being based on a gap analysis undertaken by our scientific partners and on the basis of this gap analysis we have selected a number of case studies which we conduct ourselves. Our partners both from science and from the policy side provide the support in different ways, either through in-kind contributions, without these ELD would not be what it is right now, from funding partners who directly initiate their activities on the basis of our guidance and on the basis of our gap analysis, and with the facilitation of the ELD secretariat and the scientific coordination in our own case studies. Success criteria for case studies, there's a good example there from a case study which we have conducted in the Pura region in Peru with the help of CEPAL down there. The Pura case study provides a good example for the ELD work because we are focusing on a local situation which is very hard hit by land degradation processes. On the identified data, data gap, this allows an inclusion of the results in our wider ELD process as well. Therefore, we find Pura and the work we are conducting in Pura as a very good piece of the overall puzzle to help us pushing ELD along and making a more concise, um, making more concise messages, creating more concise messages. Sorry. The methodological approach is important and that we keep a stringent approach there. Our aim is always to cooperate with national and international research institutions in the same process there. By this we help in a way with a bit of capacity building but also we make sure that the data we collect is genuine and that it's of high quality as well. Therefore it's also important for us to involve local and national governments, institutions, organizations as well. A favorable political situation as it is in Pura right now where the government demanded our work and asked for it is very very helpful for us to implement the results of our, um, of our, of our scientific work. As I said, the initiative serves decision makers from both policy le um, on all levels as well as the private sector. Therefore, we are publishing in the first half of 2015 successively three reports for different target audiences. For the scientific community, where we will discuss the methodology as well as the data and the background um, for the overall approach. For policymakers on different levels, international, national, regional, where we will discuss different tools for top policymakers, including incentives, taxes, um, a number of others as well, which could be used as 
tools of trade if you want for policy makers and who can refer to these which we give as good example which can be transferred to their own sphere of influence and also to the private sector because EOD shows that it makes sense to invest in sustainable land management it actually pays off and this is what we want to communicate to the private sector as well now that's what I call soil conservation <laughs> I like this little cartoon very much because it nicely illustrates what we are actually doing we're digging up the necessary information as I said before ELD is creating its own robust information data set but on the basis of existing material out there so if you would like to help us digging up the necessary information getting your hands dirty literally ELD would very much welcome support contributors and help from scientists economists and decision makers out there we'd like to make a strong case for the issue of land degradation with decision makers and your help in this would be much appreciated soil counts so we value it thanks for staying with me in this little presentation here and thanks for your interest in the ELD initiative I hope you'll stay with us throughout the course of the MOOC for the next 11 weeks and I can promise you that it'll be interesting and exciting things to learn interesting and exciting people to talk to and we'll make it your time worthwhile I promise that so, do not hesitate to contact us if there's any questions or issues coming up with that or so and I'm looking forward to being in touch with you all the best <laughs>